pitcher for Sunday? Uh, it's TBA right now. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be either uh, Brando Tesser or Trent Padden. Um, the last I heard from Coach Short. So. Still waiting on that? Still waiting on that, yes. How is uh, Grandpa Horton doing? Grandpa Horton is uh, doing fantastic. Um, brand new granddaughter uh, yesterday on cue. As soon as he landed pretty much and uh, got to the hospital, uh, it was like clockwork. It was perfect. Um, got the text from him with the pictures and the whole thing, and he's one proud papa. There's no doubt about it. So he's with family, and everybody's well. How tough is that beat for pitching staff going to be for you guys offensively? That's a great question. We're all uh, we're all going to tune in and find out. Um, they've got the numbers. Their numbers are fantastic. Um, you know, they've got experience, especially on the the corners of the weekend with Friday and Sunday. And it doesn't hurt to have your Saturday guy, although he's only a sophomore, have experience in Omaha and so forth. So, um, yeah, they have a good staff, um, and we're looking forward to the challenge. They had all their all three of their weekend guys go. I think it was on Tuesday. Is that probably just to shake off a little bit of rust? I mean, does that kind of no, I don't think they played the, the uh, previous weekend, and so they did throw them in short stints on Monday. Uh, Monday or Tuesday would be their schedule pin time, um, and so that's not a surprise. I would have anticipated that. Um, and so I think they all got a little bit of work in on Monday, and, uh, and then they finished their series on Tuesday with Sac State there. So. The more you play games against Oregon State, the more you're in that rivalry. Is it, does it wear off or does it intensify for you? Well, I think it intensifies when the two programs are as solid as they are. I think the way rivalries wear off is when uh, one program or both programs slip and, um, and the team's just not as good. Uh, right now, I think one of the biggest national stories in the country right now is the fact that the baseball in the Northwest, specifically the top end of the Pac-12 now, is with the two Oregon schools in Washington. Uh, I think that's a not, not only a regional story, but it's a national story with how strong Southern California and the desert baseball has been for that to move up to this part of the country, I think is exceptional. Um, but in terms of the rivalry, I think it's going to remain strong as long as the two programs here uh, stay as strong as they are. For that, for that national story of the Northwest being strong in baseball now, do you guys have to have a close series to keep that? Uh, I mean, what would a blowout do <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know that a blowout, I don't know what uh, consequences of a blowout are, you know. Um, for me, I think that the rivalry is there. It's intact. Uh, the programs have established themselves through as many games as we've played so far, roughly, you know, in the 40-game neighborhood. I mean, both teams have played well. It's not like one team showed up and we had one good weekend and now here we are playing against each other. Uh, would a blowout change things? I don't think so. I think a blowout would be disappointing to everybody involved, maybe not quite the winning team. Um, but nevertheless, I do anticipate the games being very close, especially as you look at the games on paper. It looks like it's going to lay out that way. It's already an intense rivalry, but the Pac-12 standings implications on it, too, kind of adds something else because you guys are nipping at their heels. Well, it, it, you know, we're a game behind them. Um, it's a little interesting because it's not at the end of the year like it what has been um, in the past a couple of times. So they've moved the rivalries conference-wide up to this weekend, which is great. Uh, it doesn't matter when you play a rivalry. Uh, if you play well this weekend and you win three games, uh, you still have a lot of conference games left to where you have to play well in those games or else uh, this weekend doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. And so not to discount the fact that our guys and their guys know that it's a – Big weekend, in-state, rivalry, competitive, uh, standings-wise. But it's also something that we also, in the big picture, know that it's not just a, a one-weekend deal. We still have to finish the year and play strong. And Porto the kind of guy that you almost have to design kind of a pitching approach around when just knowing that he's coming up there in that lineup? Well, he's awful good, isn't he? He's, <laughs> a, he's a guy that's um, arguably the finest hitter in, in the country. And coming out of high school, he was arguably the finest hitter coming out of high school in the country um, for that uh, era. So... Is it a guy that you absolutely alter a game plan? Um, well, he's a tough he's a tough out, I'll put it that way, and I think everybody in the conference in the country knows how good Michael is. Um, he's probably going to get some opportunities this weekend for sure, just like anybody in uniform will for either club, and, um, you know, you got to execute. So. And even if you get him out, you got Dylan Davis sitting right behind him too, so he kind of gets lost maybe sometimes with how good Michael is. Well, and it's not just uh, Conforto or Davis. They've got a solid lineup, and they've had a solid lineup. You don't get to the top of the Pac-12 area um, with one guy. You know, there's plenty of guys that have bounced around this league and are in other leagues right now um, that may be uh, the one feature 
guy in, a, in an order or a lineup, and those clubs may be middle of the pack or bottom of the pack or their league type guy, uh, even though they're, he's so, they have such a strong player in one player. Uh, I think the, the credit to Oregon State and Oregon at this point, and Washington at this point, uh, the three of us have balanced teams that we can pitch, we can play defense, and we have other than one person in our order to contribute offensively. He's been talking about his temper, and he showed a little bit of you know, getting angry at himself for a missed thing. And he said that you, he's talked with you guys about that. Have you, what have you kind of talked about, about his temper uh, with him? Well, he, he takes after his mother. Uh, <laughs> you know, his mother's a fiery competitor, and uh, so is Mitchell. Um, he's a perfectionist, just like most of the great ones are and he expects a lot out of himself and he's got the ability to do it. Um, and so he's, he's a guy that can be very hard on himself, but he also is very realistic in the fact that he can do what he's expecting of himself. So. Has, it, has it ever been a problem with him? His temper? Yeah, no. Is it, no. No, no. But he's maybe a memorable instance with him doing that, like anything kind of? He's not, uh, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being a guy who has a really crazy temper he's probably only about a five or a six and so it's not it's not a guy who is uh you know out of control whatsoever mitchell is a great kid that uh, is a great competitor but in terms of him being borderline out of control not even close he's he's definitely within control chase got three starts uh this past weekend behind the plate is, are we going to be seeing that again this weekend and if so what's he done to kind of separate himself from the other guys well his game presence has been fantastic uh, i think he's a top at the top of the pac 12 right now in home runs and so um you know where his average isn't a 300 350 400 guy he can run into a ball and he can change a game with his bat his defense has been exceptional, um, and he works with the pitching staff uh, very, very well. He gets strikes when the borderline pitches uh, show up. He does a nice job blocking, recovering. He just works well in all aspects of the game. He's got some real savvy, and is it going to continue? That's up to him. You know, We're going to reward the players that, that play their way into spots, and, and he's done that right now for us. Are, are there any players that are better with, kind of, with some of the new faces that have been pitching on the weekends and how that's been revolving? Does he adapt well to the different pitchers that are thrown out there? Yeah, we feel comfortable with any of our catchers. They all catch all the guys that have been pitching, um, you know, every day in the bullpens. They've caught them all uh, year in scrimmages, and the guys that have been here more than one year, every one of the guys has been caught a lot. So we feel comfortable with all three of our guys. Walter's a guy who's changed positions, but his hitting has really suffered. Is that unusual to, to see a freshman who's had to come in and kind of learn a new position, but really he's still been able to kind of keep his head up hitting wise? Um. I don't know. It's uh, as a rule of thumb, freshmen are. It's difficult to get a whole lot consistently out of freshmen. AJ's been tremendous. Um, he's had his ups and downs, uh, and he has learned a new position. Although he's athletic enough to play pretty much, um, you know, center field, left field, right field, second base, first base, third base. I mean, he can play a lot of different spots. And in the future, he may be a middle infielder. You know, he's that athletic to where he can do that. So. Um, for him, he's a guy that's bounced around a lot in his life, and I don't think it's a big change for him. I think probably the biggest change for him or any of the freshmen is just being able to adapt to the fact that you're seeing real quality arms every single day that you roll out, no matter who the opponent is.